What's up, everybody? Well, I got another video for you guys today. And today, much like we tested the Asus G15 Advantage out with 3D Mark, I figured, why don't we test out the two desktops too? I think with them, I only ever ran, hell, I don't think I ran anything once I built this or added the 5800X 3D and the 3090 in this thing. I think I did did it back, uh, benchmark on this Mac where I had the 9900K and the EVGA 3090 for the Win Ultra, but I don't think I ever did no benchmarks on this thing ever since I rebuilt it. Huh. And if I did, I probably just posted them like on my, uh, what do you call it? There's this little PC group I'm in on Facebook. It used to be on Google Plus, but then as you all know, that went away. So anyway, and then I figured after we're done doing the 3D mark on this computer, we'll go check out how the main guy does too. Cause on that, again, I think I might've ran Time Spy and Firestrike real quick when I first put the thing together. I think, yeah, I ran like Cinebench, Geekbench, Firestrike and Time Spy, I think. But beyond that, didn't do shit. So it'd be kind of interesting to see what all that thing can do too. So without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and hop on in and hope that this thing can uh, actually record. I was having some problems with shadow play while I was trying to do this uh, this uh, last video the other day. I upgraded my storage and I'm making a video on my new NAS. And every time I tried to get screen recorded stuff with the setup process of the NAS or technically the migration process, it kept on recording for like five seconds and then just, nope, nope, you're done. Recording has been saved. So I was like, okay, that's pretty, that's pretty fucking lame, but whatever. So hopefully that doesn't happen here, but only one way to find out. All right, guys, I keep forgetting that the stupid recording has started does oh, will keep popping up unless you're in full screen mode, but we're basically gonna go through all of these different benchmarks, just like we did on all of, on the, uh, not all of, but on the ASUS G15 Advantage. Even, but at least now we can, we're not gonna do the sampler or that one, but we will at least do the DLSS test this time, because we actually have the ability to. We couldn't do it on AMD, so we'll start with Speedway. So, well, Let's go get started. So here's the result of the Speedway. We got 5550, which is good. And we got 50, let's see, we beat average at least. All right, there's the detailed FPS right there. And with that, why don't we move on to the next test? So here's our Port Royal score. We got 13,700, which apparently is good. Our average, we beat the average at least this time. Not the best though. It's almost impossible to beat the best unless you are one of the best like tinkerers in the world. That's just not, it's not gonna happen. So don't worry about that kind of nonsense. As long as, you, as long as your things aren't super underperforming, that's when you can go, oh wait, why am I only getting this? I'm getting like, worse FPS than I'd get with a 37 or a 3070 or something like that, then, then you can worry. But anyway, let's move on to the next test. So for Time Fi Extreme, we got 9,227 with a graphics score of 10,484 and a CPU score of 5,495. So not bad. There's our score right there. We beat average again by a little teeny bit. We're nowhere near best, but can't really be the best with these kind of components anymore because they're not super top of the line anymore. And that's totally all right. Doesn't make them bad at all. They're still very, very good. But anyway, next test. Now we've got our times high score. We got 18,744, which is excellent. That's 20,689 for our graphics and 12,230 for CPU. There's our score right there. We beat the average, wow, this time by almost a 1,000. That's pretty awesome. And there's our detailed scores right there. And that's pretty much it. So on to the next one. Well, now we got 12,717 for our Firestrike Ultra score, which is 12,827 for graphics, 29,465 for physics, and a combined of 6, 636. We didn't beat uh, the average this time, though. But, like I said, sometimes that just doesn't happen. It is what it is. You're not always going to win. But, in any case, let's scroll down here real quick and look at these detailed scores. And now, we can move on to the next test. So, now for Firestrike Extreme, we got 23,306. We got 25, 227 for graphics, 29, 392 for physics, and a combined of 12,387, which again did, well, no, we did beat the average this time by a teensy bit. All right. Nowhere near the best, though. Here's our detailed scores. And all right, I think that's about enough, so 
why don't we go on to the next graphics test? Well, now our just fire strike score is done. We got 30,982. There's our graphic score right there. Physics score, combined score. And it seems as though we ever so slightly beat out the average. But nowhere near the best. But that's how it has been for pretty much every benchmark. A couple times I haven't beaten average, but it is what it is. Here's all our detailed scores, though. And alrighty, why don't we go ahead and move on to the next 3D Mark test. Well, alright, now just for fun I ran this Wildlife Extreme. We got 45,474, which is a little above average. Not as good as the best though, look at that best. That's fucking crazy. Alright, there's our detailed scores. And there we go, now we can go ahead and move on. Well now. For just regular old wildlife, we got 110,594. There's our score right there. We beat average again by a little, but not the best. No siree. Best kicked our ass. And there's the detailed scores. And again, this one is just kind of for fun. This is for way lower end stuff than this, but just figured I'd run it. Why the hell not? If it lets me, why the hell not? Anyway, to the next one. Well, here's the night raid score. We got 66,891. Here's our graphic score of 146,300 and CPU of 16,412. And we beat the average a teeny bit, but did not best the best. And this is just for integrated graphics anyway. Here's the detailed scores, though, for those interested. And now, moving on. All right, CPU profiles all done. Here's what we got for the max threads. 16 threads, which is this thing's total. 8 threads, 4 threads, 2 threads. And one thread. And we only beat the laptops single threaded by a teeny bit. I wonder how much higher single core that actually equates to. Because it seems like that does pretty good for a laptop. Comparing that to a 5800X 3D, that's not bad. Still, this chip owns it in actual games. I just thought that little bit was kind of interesting. There's all of our detailed scores for you guys right there. And now, on to the next one. Here's the storage benchmark here. We got 2153 with a Sabarant rocket. Here's our score. Ever so slightly better than average, but nothing to write home about. Here's all of the bandwidth for all of the different tests. And funny enough, I actually think the laptop beat it out on the move time, even though it's a 3.0 drive. But these tests are just kind of for fun. I wouldn't read too much into it. But with that said, let's go ahead and jump over to the next test. Now for the DirectX ray tracing feature test. We got 58 FPS for that, so just barely under 60. But it is what it is. No big deal. Close enough. So nothing else to really look through on this one. I mean, we can go through this monitoring thing real quick, and it basically stays at the same megahertz on the CPU, for except for right there it dips down a little bit. But anyway, though, why don't we go ahead and move on now? Now for the mesh shader feature test here. Uh, we got that with it off, and wow, it goes up quite a bit with it on. 176% difference is nothing to shake a stick at. But I feel like in a lot of games, when they use this, you can tell a huge difference in quality, but I don't know if that's actually, like, true. I'd have to sit there and look and actually try it out in some games. Anyway, though, let's move on. Well, all right, here's our PCI Express bandwidth test, and we're getting the full amount of our 4.0. And I think this has actually helped me figure out why I get a little bit less performance than I should on my main computer. I think that's only running at, at half speed. It's only going at like 12. But that's because I've got a damn thing populated in the top drive. I might have to rip that out of there and put it in a different bay. Because <laughs> I'd rather have full bandwidth. But anyway, to the next test. Here's the VRS feature test, and at least on this computer, let me run it, unlike on the laptop. Here's our numbers, and we got 41% game. Though, when you're already getting 1,000 FPS, does it really fucking matter to get any more? I would just not care. <laughs> at that point, I'd just be happy, as long as it wasn't bouncing all over the place, like going from 1,400 down to like 800 or something. Then it'd look really laggy. Anyway, though, moving on. Here is the second VRS feature test. And this seemed a little bit more substantial. If you had like a 240 hertz monitor or something, you could turn that on if you didn't really care super much about quality. I think this stuff kind of makes the quality go down. 
Man, the clock speed of the CPU kind of went all over the place here, too. Maybe I could stand to go and use that program. People said it makes it stay at its boost clock more frequently. Anyway, though, moving on. Now for the DLSS test. First, we're doing the DLSS 1, and we went from 100 up to 130, so we definitely got 30 FPS. That's nice. And I have it going at 1080p because we're already at ultra-wide, so I figured just going down to just regular 1440p wasn't going to do much, so that's why I went with that, and... Look at that. On that particular test, that CPU stayed at its boost the entire time. That's nice. Anyway, though, why don't we now move on to DLSS 2? Now, to finish up the 3D Mark test, we're going to do DLSS 2 here, and our results were 100, and we went up to 152. So, DLSS 2 definitely got us more FPS. Same 1080p, and I did it at quality resolution, at the quality setting. And there we go. And again, we got our monitoring down there, and that's still doing good. Our system info right there. That CPU stayed pretty much sprock solid. CPU did all, or the GPU did all right. And anyway, now we can go and wrap this video on up. Well, all right, guys, that is a wrap for 3D Mark on the secondary computer here. And I think it did a pretty good job. We beat average most of the time. We lost a couple of times, and like I thought, we weren't gonna get anywhere close to best. Like I said in the laptop video, that's reserved for people that sit there and they tinker and tinker and tinker just to get an extra two, three points in that shit. People like me are never gonna be able to beat people like that. I would rather overclock a little till it's stable, play my games. That's it, done. That's what I do anyway. Some people don't even like doing that and that's why this uh, 5800X3D is even better. You just literally drop that thing in and you don't have to do anything. Just put some decent RAM with it and the RAM isn't even as important with that thing because of the large cache pool. Pretty awesome. But if you want to do something, there is a little uh, program I've downloaded but haven't tried out yet where you basically can do a curve optimizer thing in Windows and set like, negative per core levels and get a little bit more performance that way. But since mine's so cool running and doesn't get uh, doesn't use much wattage or any of that stuff, I didn't even bother with that. But it does seem to drop. We watched little graph in some instances, it does drop out of that 4.45 gigahertz all core thing quite often. So maybe I should mess around with that. If it doesn't work out well and it starts getting unstable, just don't use the program or go back to how it was. No huss, no fuss. But anyway though, that is all I got for you guys for this particular video. I sure hope you guys enjoyed watching, because I sure as hell enjoyed making it for you. And until the next video, peace out, guys.